Yes. Board. Oh, good. Broadcast. All right. People are now signing in, which is great. And we'll give everybody a little bit of time, obviously, to uh, to log in. Now we're you're in New Mexico. Yes. Yeah. It's bright and early here. But we can have coffee together this morning. You know, yes, so cool. absolutely. Yeah, I have my, my morning. <laughs> yeah, I was joking around with everybody. Uh, we've done a few things this week leading up to this, and uh, it's been it's been somewhat comical because I'm like, oh man, it's such a chore having to get up and like shower, um, and I'm well past my haircut uh, due date, so it's uh, a lot of a lot of product. <laughs> Yes, I, I haven't gotten up this early in a in a while too. <laughs> it's seven a.m. here, so not get up time for sure. We're gonna give everybody a few more minutes to log in, and then uh, we will uh, we will get going. Uh, and we are for those people that are are logging in. Uh, my name is Neil McKenzie. I head up marketing here at Universal. Um, this is Francisca, uh, who you see here, and. Um, we had planned to execute this event um, in High Point. Um, so um, with regards to obviously what has taken place, we've, we've executed now this, this virtual market experience for people. And um, I'll go ahead and share my screen and just kind of give everybody a little insight as to what that is if you're not, um, if you're not aware as to what's going on uh, with that. So let me just do that real quick. And so um, we, uh, if you have not done so yet, you can actually uh, go to universalfurniture.com uh, slash uh, virtual market. And we have a lot of content on all of our new um, introductions uh, this spring. On Monday, we'll have a special order upholstery, which we're excited to kind of bring to you. Um, you can get in and see the new collection that we've worked on with Coast of Living, some of our new modern items, and then all of our educational events are, uh, can be found here. So um, that is available. Um, and uh, I do just want to welcome everybody to uh, this first session. We have a number of these today. Um, so we are recording all of them as well. Um, so we do want to make those available um, to you afterwards and uh, they will likely be available um, on this website right in this area uh, on Monday. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And Francisca, I'm gonna kick it over to you and um, and let you uh, go ahead. And then uh, just in terms of uh, the folks that we have on the line, you can definitely go ahead and uh, ask us questions throughout. I think we'll wait and save all those and, and Francisco will address those at the end. So um, Francisco, with that, I will uh, hand it off to you. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for having me. I hope you can hear me and see the chat so we can keep it a little bit interactive. I've got a couple of yes and no questions that I'd love to see your answers to in the chat. So I can see that, I don't know, the q and A. I I think maybe only Neil you can see, but we'll work it out. And there'll be, like Neil said, plenty of time at the end. Um, let me start sharing my screen. And thank you all for being here bright and early with me. Okay. All right. So, as always, I want to thank Neil and Universal for having me. And um, I'm extra excited because Neil and I sort of came up with this new topic to talk about. So it's a new presentation, and I've, I've been sort of dying ever since we recorded the podcast, Neil, to tell you all about um, why I think data is so important and how it can really give you massive insights into what to do now and in general for your marketing. Um, as you know, so digital strategy is my jam and especially for designers. So again, thanks for having me. Um, my goal is always to have you have a ton of clarity at the end of this and to make this actionable. So there's going to be a download um, for you to use um, that can help you work your way through getting massive clarity on what platform is best for you. All right, what are we going to talk about today? Um, 
one will have to address the the big elephant as to why we're all in our own living rooms or bedrooms and kitchens. Um, what is important right now that our lives have shifted online? Um, how can we get off the referral roller coaster, which has always been important for designers, I think, in terms of marketing, um, because our referral businesses are so referral based. And um, if you actually, I can't quite see the chat if I share my whole screen like this, sorry. Um, we can do better in our businesses if we're not just dependent on referrals because it's a passive marketing strategy and you're just kind of sitting there and waiting for a nice client, a kind client to refer you. So it's always been my mission to help you as a designer to um, get off that roller coaster uh, where your marketing is unpredictable and the new business that's coming in is unpredictable. Plus now we're in this very different situation where even if she refers you, you might not be able to do the job, right? Um, so step three, how, or third thing we'll talk about is how to use data. Uh, and this is your very own data. It's not gonna be complicated. I know us creatives can go blah with numbers. It's gonna be okay, very simple numbers. You can do it, uh, but it's really, really important to know what's working in your particular business. I don't believe in cookie cutter solutions. Um, you have to find your unique, your unique way that is true to your voice and works best um, for connecting with the clients that you have uh, and want to talk to in your world. So that's the last point. Where do we actually find our people online? Which I'm sure is something that you guys are thinking about right now. All right, I'm hoping there's some, I can't see any of you, so, um, but thank you for coming. And I hope that um, there's a few familiar faces here. and. Um, you know what, I'm gonna change how I do this so I can see your guys' um, chats. One second, otherwise it's too much of a vacuum and it feels really odd. Okay, like this I can see your chats. Okay, great. All right, so thank you for, for being here. <laughs> and joining from all around the world. And if you've seen me before, um, you know this about me, so I'll keep it super short. Um, I studied architecture uh, in my 20s in Oxford, England. It's my jam. I ran my own interior design firm in London and New York. I then had my designs featured on HGTV and The Oprah Show and transitioned to web design in 2009. And I now run an agency that stewards the online presence of designers and many other creatives and industries. Um, we actually have a wide variety of clients at this point, but um, so that's why you should maybe pay attention or could pay attention to what I'm happy to share today. Um, I have a new fantastic thing to share with you you because if you've seen me speak before um so why can't i go to the next slide all right i'm sorry um weird okay i'm gonna have to show you guys the slides here okay so um, my Nate Burkus moment. If you've seen me talk before, you've heard me say that I've been dying to meet Nate Burkus because he's the one who featured a light I designed on the Oprah show. And I finally got my moment. Neil was there at the Design Influencers Conference at the end of February this year, um, not that long ago. And I will let you share that moment with me. Excuse the video quality. I hope this is going to work uh, over Zoom as well. Um, I'm going to briefly outline why Nate is so important to me. And then I've asked him a question about visibility, which has become sort of my live theme and which will be very important in our presentation and what we're talking about today. So um, this is, I think, the perfect introduction. I've been waiting for this moment for the years. <laughs> 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 In 2006, you did a small space special on the impression of the teacher and I had some to thank you. What was it? Um, in 2006, yeah. you did a small space special on the impression and you featured.
and I had his own It became the most bittersweet moment of my career. Um, bitter because, well, sweet because, oh, for a moment, thank you. <laughs> bitter because I actually had to leave the country before it ever aired, and we couldn't work out the supply to another country in 2006. Right. So, let's see what they um, Bitter also was I was then diagnosed with a life-threatening disease that I had to give up my entire design career. Um, sweet, because I had to teach myself to code a website to be able to potentially build a product. <laughs> and um, now I know how to code, and it's become my mission for interior design to be visible. And I'll have a little promo moment like mine, but I've got my little one. And you're here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So visibility has resulted as sort of a life question came from. Mm -hmm. um, how did you push and you know for visibility in the early days of your career and how did you go about pushing for visibility in this context today? That's a great question as well. guys it sounds like the video is too garbled for you guys to hear so what neil is saying uh, not neil sorry what nate is saying is that um obviously oprah gave him massive visibility um before that though when he was just an interior designer in chicago he built connections with the press um and he had this particular reporter in at the chicago tribune who he did, was just friendly with and whenever they featured wanted to talk about the newest paint color or the best paint color for a bedroom they would end up reaching out to nate because he'd react super quickly and give them you know a fun spiel about the latest and best color for your bedroom so um and then obviously the oprah visibility he built on and then had to just be careful to not be shown or show up too drunk in a parking lot when there was paparazzi and he he said he was still drunk in parking lots but he just did that in Minneapolis and not in LA where the paparazzi would be waiting for him so um I loved his takes sort of on visibility and the story about how he built that relationship with a reporter we'll come back to in the end so remember that it's very important um, all right, so quickly in the chat box. So the chat box is there. Um, I would love to know what has been the hardest thing for you to navigate, the biggest challenge in shifting your business and marketing online. And I get that it's super hard to not be able to see your clients, to not visit your projects, but I'm, I'm more interested in the, the online piece, like what have you been struggling with in terms of online tools or um, tech struggles or knowing how to market online when you can't go out network in person or um, so ch tack, type that in the chat box and let me know, but I'll, I'll keep going. It's something that I'm, I'm just really interested in knowing and then I can address some of these issues as I go through and also towards the end. And, uh, right, so let's dive. This is Neil. Yeah, um, yeah. I was just going to say for those that are uh, yeah. that are on, there is a little chat uh, icon just at the bottom of your screen, so you can hover over that and you can ask um, uh, any questions and you can address those to uh, uh, us. So uh, feel free to go down there, type in any questions as uh, as Francisca goes about, or certainly ask a question and we can address those at the end. 
Yeah, thank you, Neil. So chat box is our friend. Otherwise, if you don't say anything in there, I feel like I'm talking into this void and I have no idea what you guys are thinking. Okay, so knowing how to market online and what tech tools to choose. And then there's the learning curve. Yes, Nicole, for sure. Jana, being structured with my time on social media, focused on distinct content and watching my tone. Yes, we'll talk to all of those. Awesome. Um, I think the tone has been a hard one to, to navigate for sure. Cool. Well, thank you for participating. <laughs> um, first one, how do we navigate marketing during this pandemic? And I'm sure you probably feel very much like I do with our world having been completely turned upside down and we're sort of hanging on a, on a mere string. I love this picture by Sarah Wickings is her name. Um, it's, to me, it's just exactly what this feels like. And my main message that I'm hoping you'll take away with you today is just please don't panic and stay strategic. Um, it's a little bit like um, when I learned to dive and I, I'm not a diver, I'm not really a, certainly not an underwater thing. I love the ocean, but <laughs> diving is not my thing. Um, and I ended up having to do it at some point and went through the whole tra training and the hotel swimming pool with a tank and how to breathe and um, then they threw us out into the ocean and we were just diving around this really boring shipwreck. If at least it had been pretty fish I think it would have done better but it was this boring shipwreck and I so didn't want to be there and I realized though that was the only thought I had for the half an hour I was diving was just don't panic, keep breathing. If I start panicking, everything is just going to get so much worse because, you know, you can't go up super quickly. You have to let your body adjust, all that stuff. So I knew it wasn't a good picture to panic. Um, I think it's super important for race car drivers too. I think they go through lots of training of how to not panic uh, because your chances for survival, quite literally in those situations, are way higher. Um, if you can stay focused and strategic, and do things step by step. So let's lay out a plan as to how we can do that. And I see you, you're saying more things about what's been hard. Um, as a rep, you've been trying to help designers and would love to help them get more Instagram followers. Yes, that's a, a great, great thing to tackle. And Lindsay, I think one of the hardest things has been finding ways to be seen because now it's even more crowded online. Yes, Lindsay, awesome. Awesome. And being seen, that's what we're talking about today. That's a key item. Okay. So let's start with three things that we really don't want to do right now. So do not stop marketing. And as Lindsay said, it is noisier out there. There's a lot going on. But if you go quiet and invisible, it is going to hurt your business more than necessary this strange time right now. Um, so don't stop. <laughs> Two, don't try to change everything because we're in this whole new landscape. Don't change everything up all at once. Um, it's too many pieces to follow uh, and then you can't track what's working and what isn't if you suddenly have a completely different business model. Um, and there was actually several people who when this first started who reached out to us and said i need e-commerce i need to sell online right now and while that definitely makes sense for some businesses um, who have an audience or who have a definite product to sell or a packaged service that's easily to deliver online um, if you don't have an audience and you don't really have products it's, it's going to be too hard so you still need to remain strategic uh, this time. And third is what one of you put in the chat box. It is kind of tricky to know how to word things right now and how to be sensitive to what's going on. And um, some people, you know, truly, truly struggling. And I think we'll see a fairly big backlash still of that going forward. So what I've watched that I didn't think was very well done, and you may have a different opinion, but um there was either um, well actually a lot of people i admire have have seen this as an opportunity to really put out much more 
in tune connecting and sensitive content. And that's been really, really nice. I actually think it's everyone sort of up their game a little bit because they've had to go inside more and be more truthful. And still online, we're building just person to person human relationships. Um, and we, we want to continue to be true and honest and good people. So um, I think the slowing down has helped in that sense that we've, we've been a little um, more honest and easier to connect with. Um, some people have sort of pushed sales in panic and they're running ads and boosting posts and they're kind of crazy posts and it doesn't really make sense what they're selling. So that obviously isn't great. Um, so being tone deaf to what's going on and pushing sales too much right now um, also doesn't work. Um, but if you, so the tone deaf question is sort of a, a something you have to answer for yourself too. So if you find someone whose voice you like, that could be something to just kind of follow and tune into and emulate to some extent um, to find the right tone for you. All right. In every bad situation, um, as from my personal story as well, there's always an opportunity. So what is potentially working right now? How can we use this time to improve our marketing? So one, the great news is everyone is suddenly online. And yes, while it's more crowded and it's noisier, um, there's also more eyeballs and a bigger audience. So if you are being visible online, you will still get seen and potentially get seen more right now. Um, I'm actually really excited that we're all online because it's my world, it's where I've lived, and now I don't have to convince clients in other states that meeting on Zoom is okay. You know, hopefully everyone's kind of getting used to Zoom at this point. So you can actually increase your reach beyond your local community. And I know that interior design can, you know, is essentially a local business. So this is kind of your moment to share content and learn how to talk to a bigger audience beyond your local network. And then three, um, I think it's a great time to really connect online and to learn to connect online. Um, like I said, it's still a conversation that we're having. It's just through this other medium. Um, but there's a lot of really valuable content out there you can listen to what your potential clients are struggling with. You know, now that they're stuck at home, what are people complaining about in their homes? There's a huge opportunity to kind of do some research about what people are needing help with right now. So listen carefully um, and revisit your offerings based on what you're seeing people struggle with. So again, don't change it up all at once, but just be very aware of um, how you might be able to help people and adjust your offer slightly to suit the current time. Um, it is definitely a time to sharpen your tech and online skills. Um, YouTube University is your best friend. If you have some extra time on your hands, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I haven't seen any extra time. But if you do, um, this definitely is the moment to, so with tech, you just have to slow down and take your time and work your way through it. There's plenty of tutorials and Google and YouTube will be able to answer any question that you have, any skill that you wanna learn. Um, but it's a really great time to become comfortable with it because it will help you in your business going forward. It'll make you a stronger business owner. And then I don't know if anyone else has discovered TikTok during this time, um, say a yes in the chat box if you have. It's incredibly addictive and yes, um, you can think it's, um, I know, thanks, Audrea and Rashida. Uh, it's so addictive. It's so funny. And yes, there's a lot of kids dancing on there. But um, the rest of the world, especially the moms who follow the kids to try and work out what their kids are doing, um, are on there too. And there's a huge opportunity um, to be seen on TikTok. So the, the, it's the platform with the biggest growth right now. I mean, people who've posted, I don't know, maybe a total of 10 videos over two weeks have 13,000 followers. So if you can at all get comfortable with doing videos, um, try it, play with it. Um, 
it's really, really um, amazing and uh, sort of a fantastic new, new tool um, that will change. So it's kind of where Instagram was maybe four or five years ago. Um, but you, all you have to do is, if you don't like the content that's on there, just put content that you feel is right on there. Um, don't worry about the 15 year olds dancing kind of next to you. All right. Um, how to get off the referral roller coaster. That's our next bit here. And how can we actually manage your business growth instead of being dependent on this passive um, way of growing your business where a good client might eventually refer you? Um, I picked this little again by Sarah Wicking's little uh, couple. What we want is we want to find clients where the sparks fly and we have sort of love at first sight. That's the same, the same principle. So this is where it's going to get a little numbery. And I hope a lot of you know um, what your conversion rate is and what it is. In case you don't, I'll give you a quick definition. So a conversion rate is any desired action that you want a potential client to take. And in marketing, we always start with 2% as sort of a baseline rate. So simple example, and people in the past have done this, and I've helped my mom as well to, to do this when she had a painting school, and I was probably six, seven, eight. She would make flyers. We'd put them through people's doors and into their letter boxes, and the statistic always is true at the end of the day when you've put a hundred postcards or flyers to through into people's letters boxes two people may pick up the phone or will probably pick up the phone and say yeah i'm interested in that so that means you've converted two percent of people to take an action to get in touch um so this is the the formula for that. There's also online tools that help you. You can put your numbers in and um, find out what your conversion rate is. So it's important to know it for statistics in your business. Like, um, so if we're talking online, you have a certain amount of eyeballs or visitors that come to your website. And so many out of those people will actually call you or sign up for your email list. Um, so Google Analytics helps you know what your conversion rate is from website visitors to people actually calling you. Um, the trick is that a lot of portfolio websites that we have as designers just don't get enough. So a lot of the websites I see that aren't marketed, get like 60, 80 people visiting it a month. So if only two people out of 100 might call you, and that's actually sort of a high rate for online conversions, you're just not gonna get a call um, because it's not enough visibility to get a conversion rate based on this, this sort of baseline. Um, so importance again of knowing this conversion rate for different marketing activities, and I'll, I'll tell you how to work that out in a minute, um, is that once you know that it's 2%, this is the step that most people miss about knowing the conversion rate is, you can now be proactive and actually map, map out how much you have to market to get enough business. So let's backtrack. If my conversion rate is 2% and I want to get two new clients in the next month, I'm gonna to have to reach out to 100 people in a meaningful way to potentially find those two clients. Um, I like working it backwards that way because it makes it more predictable and it gives me a roadmap for knowing what I have to do. So a little bit more in terms of numbers. As an interior designer, you're probably fine as a smaller firm with four to six clients per year maybe 10 clients per year. So over a 10 year time span, I'm sort of going looking at all the numbers. You might kind of really only need 100 clients in 10 years. That's a, I feel that's a doable number, right? It's not so scary in this, I've got to get clients, panic. Um, so let's play this out. At a 2% conversion rate, you need to get yourself and your work seen by 5,000 people in 10 years. 
So what does that mean if we break it down? It's 500 people per year, it's 42 people per month, and it's 10 people per week. So if right now, five work days a week, if you reached out to two people, kindly, honestly connected, be it online, be it picking up the phone, be it writing them an email, be it commenting on some of their Instagram posts or sending them a tweet. If you did that for two people a day, consistently, you potentially have taken control of growing your business or securing yourself 10 clients per year. Make sense? Oh, Mark, Mark is asking why, why I feel TikTok is valuable as a designer. Um, well, it's video, so you can show your, your home, you can show your why, you can talk to the camera, people can really connect to you. Um, you can show beautiful video, you know, if you have the resources to produce high-end video. So it's uh, very direct and people get a really good feel for you. Um, Plus, the potential for growth is so high. You know, we're all struggling on Instagram to get a thousand more followers because it's so crowded. And then, you know, if you're an influencer, you have the whole um, visibility piece that is valuable. And, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the end. But essentially, you can become an influencer on TikTok very quickly right now, which potentially the value of that audience gives you more weight with brands and for other collaborations. So that's why I think TikTok is a great opportunity right now. Um, cool. All right, Mark. So, and I actually have more content than I thought, Neil. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so how do I know where my party's at? And this is the good bit where um, I've developed this tool in my business that works really, really well with our clients and I want you to have it. So um, I'm excited to share it. How do I know which online platform is right for me? And obviously now that we understand that conversion rate is important and you might be going, well, 2%, that's really lame and low. And obviously on certain platforms, you, your conversion rate may be much higher, which of course is gonna save you money as a return because you don't have to find 100 people, right, to get um, your a client. Maybe you only have to talk to 50 people to get a client on a different platform. So this is my tool filter. Um, and you can go to this link now or after and download it. It actually has two pages in it for offline and online ways to market your business. And it's, it's a table um, that will help you determine, so I always say the top three are your lowest hanging fruit and the best ones to keep focusing on. So we fill, pre-fill sort of all these online tools that you may already be using. And then in column one, you insert on a scale of one to five, where you get the most clients. So you can just, so this is where the data piece isn't that scary. Just feel it out. Like, has your website actually ever gotten you a client? Some would be a two or yes, I get all my inquiries through my website would be a five. And then the second column, let's rate how much we like that platform. So, or how natural is it? I always am of the um, philosophy that if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it. So do you keep your website up to date? Do you like blogging on it? Um, is, is it something that you watch? Do you like reaching out to the people who contact you through it after? Is that working? So also give that a scale of a rating of one to five, where one is no, and five is yes, I love it. Um, and then you add up your totals and you're going to come out with Oh yeah, actually Facebook has gotten me a lot of clients and that's an interesting one for designers too, that um, traffic is much easier derived from Facebook than from Instagram. So a lot of, when you look at your data, um, you get extra points if you actually look at your data. <laughs> um, but you know, you can just kind of remember and work it out. You know, you might love Pinterest and give it a five, but has it ever gotten you a client if it hasn't, give it a one and then add your totals up. 
All right, so you can do that. We don't have time to do it together now, but um, and I, was just, uh, I was just going to add, we will uh, include a link um, where we also post uh, this uh, this recording so people can um, download the uh, this form as well as uh, be able to uh, to rewatch this um, if they've missed anything. So awesome. Yeah, thank you. So this is key in our business and when we work with clients in devising a unique strategy that works for your business because you already have data. You may just not have looked back to um, analyze it. All right, so I hope this is helpful to you. Um, let me know, shoot me an email afterwards after you've done it and let me know. Um, so here again, this is an offline marketing strategy, but it obviously worked out well for Nate to build this connection with a reporter, which got him a lot of press, which equaled visibility. And as we now know, the, the more we can increase our reach, the more we increase the probability that a client will find us and reach out to us. Um, so that's why kind of Nate's answer to visibility is very important. And at the same time, you know, I had my Oprah moment and everybody always sees dollar signs in their eyes when Oprah features something because the reach is just, you're just in one instant, you know, you're that conversion rate example, you know, you're bumping up the numbers by such a massive amount um, that you should be getting sales. And obviously that's a whole other story why we didn't, but um, the truth is that visibility equals true hard money. It's either sales for your product, service, it's additional clients, the more you can drive those numbers up and stay visible, the more money you're going to make at the end of the day is the truth of it. So that's why it's important not to go dark right now and to hide, even though you might want to. Um, and data is the new gold, um, which is my sort of favorite saying right now, because you can shortcut and save yourself marketing expense and effort because um, it's going to take time to reach out to two people a day to kind of secure this 10 new client um, scenario per year. Um, so once you study your data and you know what converts better, you can just shortcut that route. I hope that makes sense. Let me know. Um, in summary, what we need to do is step one, understand and know your conversion rate on the platforms that came up high for your, in your tool filter table, okay? So step two is know your best converting platform and way to get clients and build on it. So don't let your low hanging fruit dry up, um, get busy with them and can kind of pursue them even now. And then three, work backwards from the amount of clients you need to come out of this whole period smiling, right? So set yourself a goal for the next month or two that we're still gonna be in this situation. Um, kind of work backwards using that formula of the conversion rate, knowing which platform is best for you and then just get busy and hammer it and do it. But it's gonna make your outcome predictable versus you sitting there and waiting for a kind client to refer you at the end of this. All right, um, I hope that was helpful. So we will switch to a little bit of Q&A now. Um, again, you can put a bar down here is a question and answer panel. And actually I can see it, Neil. Um, and the chat box, um, you can download the tool filter. And usually when I'm in high point, my aim is always to just, because I don't need to shop for product, I'm just available and around. Um, you can come and see me virtually. You can go to my website and there's a big book of free consult button. Uh, it is completely free. I love talking about this stuff. Um, I've made some slots available over this weekend. So book, book a slot on there if you have more questions or if you want my help to just understand kind of what your best strategy during this time is and to go forward with. Um, you can join me on Instagram and you can download the tool filter. But yeah, anybody have any questions? Um, uh, Francesca, um, one, one thing I wanted to kind of mention, you know, one couple of the questions we got really kind of talked about, um, you know, just marketing online, having to, how, 
you know, how to develop, I think, a core strategy on how to uh, market online. Can you talk about maybe the scalable nature of not trying to do too much uh, all at once and maybe trying to just pick your spots a little bit and then, and then ultimately measure on what you're executing? Yeah, yeah. So when you use that tool filter, that should give you your top three. And I would not, I would probably even just pick one, but I would never go beyond trying to master three pieces at once. Um, it just becomes too confusing and just time, time wise, it's not efficient. So like if, if you're making TikTok, you're new, obviously it's, it's a little bit riskier because you're not going to have data on how TikTok will convert for you. Um, but if you have, if you kind of aren't exactly desperate for a client right now, it could be a fun thing to just dive in and learn. And then I would just go all in and, and like, post three times a day on it, practice all the ways that you can use TikTok and make videos in it. And um, it's such an amazing tool. So yeah, one, one at most. And then to measure, you, know, you each platform gives you analytics. That's the beauty of the online space is that we have such quick feedback. Um, and that's why, you know, we can, we can almost kind of make money quicker online because we get the data so fast and then you adjust right away. You know, you, you look every day or at least once a week, you look at the results of your efforts and you're going to learn quickly what type of video does better on TikTok over another one. Does it do better if you dance or does it do better if you do a home tour um, or if you just talk to the camera and, and give it advice. You know? So um, yeah, it just speeds up your cycles. Uh, two other questions that I see here. Uh, one was, how do you start maybe an online effort if you don't have the ability to use um, imagery from your previous, um, you know, position or a place of employment? Uh, I think that kind of speaks to what you're just talking about in terms of creating new content. You know, how do you just kind of think about all those different tools that are available to begin to create new content? Uh, and it might be very simple things at first. Yeah. Yeah. In, in that scenario, I would, it's, it's most important that you know your brand and where you want to go. So I would, I would almost use it as a mood board and, and see it as aspirational. I think some of us use our homes that way too. I do. That was my answer to your last question in the podcast as to what home means to me. <laughs> um, I would, uh, so if you don't have past content, um, I would go out there creating an aspirational brand and show the types of people you admire, the work you admire, always crediting, um, but um, kind of communicate that way where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Another question uh, that we got, that's my daughter. <laughs> um, Good morning. Uh, yeah, she's busy with her virtual schooling. Um, another question I had uh, that came through was um, it's hard to get samples. It's hard to send samples out. Uh, this is a question I'll answer. Uh, so if, uh, if you're working with us, if you're working with Universal, you have the ability, of course, to shop um, online with us. We have a full back end for designers to uh, log in and uh, get everything they need, including uh, samples, catalogs, swatches, et cetera. And those can actually be, uh, you can select to ship those to a place of your, uh, need so it doesn't necessarily all need to come through you. So that is some of the things that we've done in terms of uh, digital tools to allow you to you know hopefully maximize your experience with us. So um, uh, just do it all with us. <laughs> so uh, That's awesome. <laughs> um, oh, Erica is asking you, Neil. Can you? How can we do it? Yeah. Me? So um, here, I'll, let me um, let me share my screen real quick, and I'll just try to show people if they're not familiar on how to do this. Give me one second. All right, so uh, if you're not familiar, I'll just take two seconds real quick. So you have the ability um, as a designer, um, you know, if you're not familiar, if you're not part of our program, you have the ability just to go on to our website, uh, click on this to the trade um, section. Uh, you can uh, join our program uh, and uh, you do get 20% off your first order. I'll mention that. So we have a lot of content here for you to kind of dig through um, just in terms of what we're doing. But all you need to do is uh, if you are set up and if you're not set up already, 
uh, you sign into our iStore. Uh, I won't do that right here, but you can sign in and immediately it's basically you are navigating the website as you normally would, uh, except you're seeing your price and you're also seeing availability information. So all of that uh, comes up in one, in one spot. Uh, and then you have the ability to add it to your cart and check out and uh, you know, do everything that you would normally do if you were buying you know, online, you're just doing it through uh, kind of the secure backend. So we also have people you can call uh, just on our design line. So if you have a question about that process or you, maybe you don't feel comfortable necessarily hitting the transaction button, uh, they can kind of walk you through and, and help you do that um, online. So there are, a lot, there are a few tools there, hopefully to uh, you know, just make the process of what's happening right now um, you know, a little easier for you in terms of getting what you need. But um, you know, also I think just ongoing, I think it's a, it's a great tool for um, you know, just uh, managing your relationship with us. So I uh, just wanted to share that. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, I think Erica saying. Oh, samples, sorry, yes. So when you're logged in uh, to that new, um, when you're logged into that iStore, uh, you have the ability uh, to click on the area under your account and you'll see a little area um, that will refer you into our um, our portal where you can then go and transact and see all the things that are available. And um, Erica, shoot me an email, nmckenzie at universalfurniture.com, and uh, we can send you some screenshots um, and just show you how to do that step by step. Cool. So, great. Um, and uh, yes, as a retailer, you should. We are going to make some tools available for you soon online. Uh, but yes, as a retailer, you should contact your uh, sales representative and they can do that on your behalf at this moment. Perfect. Great. Yeah, well, um, this has been this has been great. We are going to make this available. Uh, Francisca, I think you offer, you know, there's a lot of um, things that you make available that um, I think can really help people get um, um, the opportunity to, um, you know, take advantage of, um, you know, I think kind of developing a core plan. Um, a couple of questions that just came in, you know, how do you feel about giveaways? Um, you know, I think that, um, I think there's opportunities to, it just kind of depends on the tone. And, you know, if you've never done one before, maybe now is not the best time to do it. Uh, if you, if you do them and you can, um, you know, I think tie it into something that can make sense. Um, you know, I think it makes sense to do that. We're, we're doing one right now for uh, home office uh, and working from home. Um, and, uh, you know, we do them throughout the year. So it's, it's a fairly consistent part of our, of our communication. Um, and then um, let's see, um, if you already have an account with Universal, do you get 20% off? You do if you've never placed an order with us. So let's see, uh, I'm talking about my business online. I'm in the central time zone. Let's see. Let me, um, let me follow up with this person who's asking this question so we can make sure we get into those specifics offline. So um, yeah, this is great. So we are, uh, yes, the recording is gonna be available. It will be in uh, the section of the virtual market website under this event, so you just log on to Virtual Market, you go into the educational area, and you'll be able to click on the link and watch all of what we've uh, went through today, uh, as well as download the form uh, that Francisca uh, went over. So, and if you haven't done so already, you can also uh, check out the podcast uh, that we did uh, a couple months, uh, felt like a year ago, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> so, um, but there's some great insight there. And uh, again, we really appreciate everybody taking some time this morning, uh, Francisca, especially you who, uh, you're in mountain time, I think. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, it's, it's early. Yes. <laughs> Cheers. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody. For, uh, yeah. Thanks for everybody making some time. And uh, again, we have a number of other events taking place today. So um, feel free to, um, you can still hop on to those if you've not done so yet. So uh, thank you again to everybody. Uh, and uh, Francisca, thanks for making time for us. Thank you. All right. Thanks for having me. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.